even more trophies. They've got such talent, haven't they? Yeah, we. I think in when we won it in 2010, we had an opportunity to go on and build and get better as a nation at, at white ball cricket, at T20 cricket, and we kind of got left behind again. Um, but now we have a huge opportunity to become the best number one in, in the world in all formats very comfortably. We've got the players. We, we've sort of got the facilities now and the coaching style and, you know, under captains, you know, very, very good captains. So I think we've, we've got everything. We, we can achieve great things. I, I really believe that um, if we keep moving forward and keep striving to get better and better. 100%. So I think, you know, it's amazing for the team. Um, it's great for English cricket, isn't it, to be double world champions. Um, and long may that continue. But yeah, you you don't get much sleep, you know, the celebrations. And I'm, I'm sure the boys will be absolutely shattered as well because I'm guaranteed they wouldn't have slept the night before uh, before the match because, you know, I didn't. It, it was horrendous and all the boys didn't sleep, didn't get to sleep till like five, six in the morning. Some of the lads didn't even sleep because um, they were just sort of playing the game over and over in the heads before they even got to the ground. Not an easy one. Well, I, I, I felt after 2010, when we we played a new brand of cricket that was kind of not seen by an English team before, and then going on from there, we, we sort of got left behind a little bit again um, in, in shorter format, a white ball cricket. And then with Owen Morgan taking over, sort of rebranded, restyled the team, um, and I think also the introduction of more one day cricket um, has kind of helped, hasn't it? You know, we do complain a lot about there's too much one day cricket. And yes, there might be. But on the back of that, everybody plays white ball cricket, don't they? It's what everyone wants to do at the moment. And I think the reason that we've got such a big pool to pick from is because we play so much more white ball cricket and we've got so many players travelling around the world and playing in, you know, T20 franchises and IPLs, which then obviously we've got a bigger pool, bigger squad and a, and a stronger squad to pick from. And I mean, you could argue this team that played, you know, yesterday, there's probably another 10 players in there, 10, 20 players you could have sort of picked from, couldn't you? You know, throughout the summer, there's been some great additions who have done well, but not quite made the team. So, yeah, I think the introduction of more T20 cricket has made us more stronger in, in that format. No, definitely, definitely. I think what Ben Stokes has sort of said and done is is that calming influence, um, doesn't panic, um, very level-headed. Uh, and, and I think with someone like him, it runs through the team, doesn't it? And when you've got a player like that, with his stature, when he's so calm at the crease, it certainly goes through the team. Um, and the team say, you know what, we don't, there's no panic, we don't need to panic, we can easily win this game. And it showed yesterday, it showed in the semi-final and it also showed, you know, the Sri Lanka game where it, again, was getting very close and, and Ben Stokes didn't panic. But I think the whole team are just accustomed now to playing in, in big tournaments and being used to being under pressure a, a lot more. I, I think with Stokes especially, it, it, it's pretty extraordinary that he managed, he was the anchor when England won the, the one day um, World Cup a few years ago. I mean... It's a pretty special thing to be able to do that, isn't it? Just to be able to wipe off the pressure and, and go again. I mean, what, what makes him such a special cricketer for England? I think that, that in itself, you you know, you know, kind of have one once-in-a-generation type players that um, when the big occasion comes around, that, that more often than not, that player is, is turn, he turns up and he turns it on and he makes things happen. And you look, you know, the Ashes and the 2019 World Cup. It, it, it's almost crazy to say this, but it's almost like he's just playing a regular game in the park. You know, he doesn't worry about the situation or what type of game he's playing in. I think it's just, I'm out here. I'm just going to play my game and I'll see us over the line. And, and I think once you take, strip it all back and you, are, you keep it very, very simple, um, it certainly changes how you play as a player. Definitely, and, and he's been, look, it's phenomenal, isn't he? Yeah, already cemented himself as an England great, I suppose, would you say? I would, de I would definitely say more, most definitely that he he's arguably got a bit, he could be called Sir Ben Stokes at some stage, no doubt, but I think he's done it so many times now, you can't, you can't argue with that, can you? 
with what he's done um, in the key moments under pressure, he's he's the man. He's the man to do it. And such a great redemption story, I think, as well, considering the, the final over he had against the West Indies in the, in the previous final England were in. I mean, such mental strength to come back. It must be it must feel so special for him as well after, <laughs> after that. Yeah, I think we all we all know sort of playing in, you know, having played professional sport that there's always highs and lows. Um, there's always negatives. There's always days where it doesn't go your way and, and maybe your opposition number gets the better of you or you just have a bad day out and you either learn from that or you can just sulk about it and it can you, you can let it affect you. And I think what Ben Stokes has done, you know, after that World Cup final, you know, since then, you could argue he's never, ever looked back as a, as a, as a player and his performances. And look, we've all done things as well. You know, the, the things that, you know, we've sort of seen away from the cricket. We've all done stupid things. We've all done things that we regret or, you know, we didn't mean to do. And, you know, you grow and mature. And he, he's done that, you know, he's he's done his time. He, he's He's been open and honest, um, you know, also with his mental health issues and everything like that. But I think, you know, with his cricket, you know, he's improved immensely and he's turned himself into a mighty fine cricketer. 100%, 100%. Yeah, to, uh, again, I understand England's decision not to have him in the setup because, you know, we are kind of idols and heroes and we are respected as sports people and we should, you know, do things in the right manner. But again, he's served his time, as it were, in, in terms of, you know, not being in and around the England setup. He's gone away, worked on his game. Uh, again, you know, he's a lot older, a lot wiser. He's matured. He probably regrets his mistakes he's made. But again, another fantastic story, isn't it? Cricketing story that we all like to sort of see. Um, and it's great that he's done so well too. And then to come into the side and, and then just be a world champion straight away. I'm quite jealous, actually. I wish, I wish my story was like that. But I mean, credit to him, you know, as well for also never giving up and going out there and fighting for his place. And you know, there's huge, there was huge cries, wasn't there, to get him back in the set up once Jason Roy was dropped and it's been the right decision. Definitely. Yeah, I think we're, you know, when you win something so special, you need those kind of stories, don't you? And he's been no different to any other player. I think he's been uh, amazing. He's in, you know what I've seen with Sam, he's improved so much as a, as a cricketer. And again, as a bowler, he always makes things happen, not just bowling, but you know, he's all round, you know, play in terms of his batting, his fielding. He, he's unbelievable and he's improved and he's got better and better. And again, you sort of throw the ball to him or, or, or Sam Curran, he makes things happen. And again, that's quite a rare commodity for someone to, you throw them the ball and, and you know he's either going to take a wicket or do something very special. And he's had a wonderful tournament, hasn't he? Um, I've been really impressed with his how he's bowled, um, how he's opened and and also his skills towards the back end at the death. You know, we talk about having the variety and left arm and England have obviously seen that position as massively important. Um, but what he's done, you know, you could you could sort of say as well, he's under pressure from Reese Topley, David Willey, um, you know, Luke, Luke, um, what's his, I forgot his blooming, the the lad, yeah, yeah you know what I mean, don't you? Um so him, him as well. I mean, they've had so many left armers, but he's been the pick of everyone. He's bowled beautiful. He really has. I think he's been pretty, pretty extraordinary. Well, it, uh, quick and easy about the player. He's, he's an amazing player, isn't he? I mean, 360 player, great to watch, entertaining, hits the ball so hard. I mean, you know, we all know what Josh Butler can do in terms of his batting. And his keeping has been, he's been very good, but I think for me, the standout is his captaincy um, since taking over from Owen Morgan. Of course, he's, he's learned a lot from Owen. I think, you know, being under him and learning how, you know, Morgan runs the team, you know, the things that he wants from the team, what he expects from the team, and also, you know, how Owen Morgan plays the brand of cricket that he wants to play. And I think that's rubbed off on, you know, on Joss. And then I would say his captaincy this World Cup has been, been brilliant. He's been open to, you know, changing the batting order when he feels necessary. I think his bowling changes have been spot on at key times, you know, when they've needed a wicket or something needs needs to happen or 
one ball is maybe under a little bit of pressure. He he's changed, you know, the bowling unit straight away, and I think his captaincy has been been right up there. De- definitely, I think mean, he's been fantastic. And just looking at has been right, I suppose. It's probably I, I, no, I don't think the balance is right. Yes, I. You can see why we're world champions in in white ball cricket because we play that probably a lot more. And I think you know we've sort of let slip um, county cricket and then test cricket. But that's not a criticism to anyone. I think all that needs ironing out is the schedule. If you can get the schedule right and make sure that, you know, there's county cricket throughout the year and your best players can kind of play 50% of the time, um, I think then, you know, you'll see our red ball team, you know, thrive and get better and better. I, I just think because there's so much cricket that, you know, you don't have enough time to practice your skills. And you've seen how skillful we are in, in white ball. I think we're just missing a trick in, in terms of playing enough red ball cricket at the right times. No, I, I tend to agree with you, actually. It, it, it's, it's been a tricky one. And I, I do sympathise with them to a certain extent. because there's, there's only a certain amount of time in the summer. But Yeah. Look, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick one out there as well. You know, the 100, I have to not criticise the 100. I mean, I think it's been a wonderful for the women's game. But could you have not done that um, in T20 cricket on a Friday night, had the women's game before and had it on terrestrial TV still and had all the razzmatazz with a blast and get have three overseas or four overseas rather than having the 100? And again, it's not a criticism towards the 100, but it, it's the 100, no one else plays it around the world. Now we are... T20 world champions, T20's played all around the world and the 100 isn't. So I, I think something really has to, to give in the, in the schedule. And again, I'm not saying get rid of the 100. I'm just saying something needs to be looked at and done about, you know, how many, you know, how many formats, what's the schedule like, what's the diary, how are we going to get our best players playing all formats and wanting to play all formats? That's the question. Definitely, I, I think it's 